Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you one of the most powerful and underrated account takeover techniques using Punicode-based IDN homograph attacks. As always, ethical hacking requires proper authorization. Make sure you have explicit permission before testing any assets. This video is for educational purposes only. Let's get started. Recently, I came across an article in POC shared by the Vorovax team about a powerful vulnerability that abuses Punicode to take over user accounts. They've explained the technique really well, and I highly recommend checking out their post for a deeper understanding. Using this method, they managed to earn a $50,000 bounty, and the best part? It's surprisingly easy to find on real-world targets with a critical level of impact. Now, the reason I'm making this video is that while their article and video cover the core concept really well, there's one important part that's missing, and that's how to actually create a Punicode email and test it properly on bug bounty programs. I've seen so many people on YouTube comments and on Twitter asking the same thing, and it wasn't addressed anywhere. So in this video, I'll walk you through the full process, including how you can test this vulnerability without needing to buy any IDN domain or set up a mail server. A uh, big shout out to Amir Mohammed for setting up the lab environment so I can demonstrate the full POC for you all. Let's dive in. So the first step is pretty simple. Go to any target website that allows email signup to be any login page and register a new account with a normal email. For receiving email callbacks, we're going to use Burp Collaborator, which acts like your fake SMTP server. After signing up, log in using the same credentials just to confirm that the account is working as expected. And after that, log out the account. Now, here comes the trick. We're going to sign up again, but this time we'll use Punicode characters inside the email address. You can use the script I created. It shows you all the available Punicode characters along with their encoded values. Just type in any alphabet you want to convert and it'll generate the Punicode for you. You can also double check the output using punicoder.com, but make sure you remove any spaces from the value before using it. Here's something important. Browsers like Chrome automatically encode special characters, which will break this trick. So you need to use Burp Suite to intercept the request and replace the email field manually with your Punicode version email. Once you forward that request, if the response says something like email already exists, it means the application is treating both the original and Punicode email as the same after normalization. That's a clear sign of misconfiguration and a potential vulnerability. Now go to the forgot password or reset password page. Enter the Punicode version of the email address and again, do it through Burp Suite so the characters don't get encoded. Forward the request and now you should see an SMTP callback in Burp Collaborator with the password reset link. Copy that link Open it in your browser and reset the password. Now comes the real test. Try logging in again, but this time with the original email, the non-punicode one and the new password you just set. And you're in. You've just taken over the account. No user interaction, no email verification, nothing. Clean account takeover with just punicode tricks. Now well, let's take it further. Try repeating the same steps on a different email domain. Start by signing up with a normal email. Then try signing up again using a Punicode variant. Again, make sure to use Burp Suite to bypass encoding and forward the request. If you see email already exists, you're good to go. Head over to the password reset page, use the Punicode email, and send the request check your collaborator for the SMTP callback. Open the password reset link. If the reset link doesn't work in the browser, it's most likely because the browser encoded the value. That's why you need to use Burp. Now send the reset request again through Burp. And grab the reset link now change the password and then log in with the original email and the password you set up. If successful, you found zero click account takeover. All right, 
One more cool variation I want to show you using Punicode in the username part of the email instead of the domain. So this time, we're going to sign up using a Punicode version in the username. Again, append your Burp Collaborator domain so you can receive the SMTP callback. Now, this time, create the account using the Punicode email, but the browser will block it due to encoding issues. So use Burp Suite once again. Intercept the signup request, insert the Punicode email manually, and forward it. If the account gets created successfully, you're good to move to the next step. Go to the Reset Password page and enter the non-Punicode version of the email, the original one. If the site is vulnerable, you'll receive the reset email on Burp Collaborator. Copy that link and reset the password. Now try logging in using the Punicode version of the email. Again, do it via Burp Suite. And boom, you're in. Isn't this one of the cleanest and most dangerous account takeover techniques you've seen? No user interaction, no phishing, no clicking links, just smart use of Unicode and email normalization. That's why this is considered a critical vulnerability and are paying such high bounties when it's discovered on main website. I hope this video helps clear up all the confusion around how to create Unicode emails, how to test them, and why you don't need to buy any fancy domains or set up complex infrastructure. You just need Burp, a good lab setup, and the right approach. That's a wrap for today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell and follow me on Medium so you're always updated with our latest content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.